Hey guys, Infidel1258 here. Today I want to share with you a clip with me and Jim discussing Wraith, the new life legendary summoner. We spend the first 15 minutes talking about the best matchups, the monster cards that are going to complement and work well, and which really got a promotion or an upgrade just because Wraith will work so well with them. That's the first 15 minutes and the rest of the video will be talking about the price predictions and justifying what numbers I think are appropriate for this, for the cost of this amazing legendary seminar. Let's get into it. And if you want to come hang out at these live events on Friday nights, it's 9 PM to 11 PM Pacific standard time on Splinterlands TV coming out. Bye. Okay. So you guys probably all saw this before me. I didn't see it until Jim dropped it on me. He sent me this puppy and I was, I actually responded like, is that legit? Because I, I was like, for, well, this, well, this, this font just, I've never seen any YouTuber doing that. Like, I don't know who, I know it says it's from Digicon, but this, this font, like it didn't feel like, uh, oh, I, I wasn't like, hey, that's Crypto Llama or hey, that's, yeah, I didn't know yeah. who it was. So I was like, okay, I need to know for sure. Yeah, this is just some banner that they had. Uh, I believe Bulldog posted it in the, uh, in the discord of Splinterlands. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, they used this at Digicon it's it's looks good man jim maybe I, I what do you think what do you we talked about before we started recording but give me give me like a minute or two about your initial thoughts do you want this card how is it going to play in your deck what what price any any comments you got on it the first thing that jumps out to me is six mana i'm so glad we know the amount of mana that these summoners are going to be mm-hmm you know, there was obviously speculation. A lot of people thought six. Some people thought it could be eight or even higher. Mm -hmm. um, but with with six, I think it is a really good number to have it at. Mm -hmm. And uh, the abilities, they gave another defensive summoner to white. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not too, too surprised, honestly. I was hoping for something to do with more offensive capabilities, but I guess the Amplify does kind of add to that. But you do need the correct uh, the correct characters at that point. Yeah. And, and as soon as I saw them, I went to go look what white creatures have Thorns, ref uh, Return, Fire, and Magic Reflect. I wasn't too impressed, but when you told me to think about the the neutral monsters that's when i was like oh my god yeah so much better yeah yeah i'm i'm really excited about this card i think i tweeted about it i said it i i only learned about it like an hour and a half ago or so and i tweeted on i tweeted saying that it is i think this card is must have like just plain and simple and then separately, I feel these cards all got a big buff due to Wraith. Pay attention to pricing. And these are the cards that I went through, and there are probably more, but I went through with Peak Monsters earlier today, and I went through and I was like, okay, look, white, I clicked on white, life, and neutral, and I was like, magic, magic reflect, uh, not just legendary. Because I this card right here is amazing, and I've loved it for so long. It's a wild format card. It's not going to be available in modern because it's beta. But it's an exceptional tank. And one of its main weaknesses is that it has no, it has no, it has a slight vulnerability to magic attack. It has magic reflect, but then it dies quickly to magic too. So it's like this strange dichotomy where it's got a, it benefits from magic attackers um, by sending that back at them, but it also dies relatively quickly from them. And so it's not one I regularly drop in, 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 in situations where I think my enemies got magic, but now it will be for sure. I own this card. I love this card. It's a, an excellent card and it's got, you know, four armor with the shield, mind you. Remember, shield is going to complement um, the void armor also because when three magic attacks, it's going to be two magic damage. And dude, this card to me was the immediate like silver shield paladin got a huge buff by this by this new summoner um but what i did was i went through and i was like okay look magic reflect these ones all you know let's have a peek like yes silver shield paladin of course lord erinthus but this card is amazing cornelius of course 
Blinding Reflector. I, and I, I, I did watch Bulldog's video on this, and I thought he covered this one quite well. And yeah, this card's not a great card in some sense, um, but it certainly got better today with that armor kicking in and really being a contributor to it, this thing's sustainability. Now you're talking upwards of 11 hit points um, at the highest levels because... You're gonna combine, dude. Eleven hit points for three mana with 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 you know like this with blind in there by the way and magic reflect, which is gonna be amped up. Yeah, that's a big big upgrade for this card. I also like the public core conjurer as well. Mm -hmm. Big time, that uh, magic reflect, right? Mm -hmm. The magic reflect. It also then gives him access to having armor as well, so he can really tank a shot but later on he also gets divine shield so it's like he can tank two shots without even taking any life damage Dude, yeah Nasty. and then on top of that if you have any form of repair now you're just like all right this is even better than yeah exactly plus the plus the flying making him evasive plus now the magic reflect yeah. uh, i think that really buffs him up as well mm-hmm Monk uh, gets like, I, uh, of course, the magic reflect is going to be. This is at the highest level, so, so it's not going to benefit everybody. But it's always nice that I really like this card. I think it's super. I use it a lot actually, especially using uh, amplify in a context um, in 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 little league where the four mana cost monsters. Because it because often I find little league, you'll see cards like um, Doctor Blight. You'll see cards like. Um, Jin Bilka, and they will delete themselves if you've got the right uh, magic reflect and if they don't have like a triage, for instance. So this is maybe not as impacted by the, the new card. I think Brian, Blinding Reflector, Pelicor Conjurer, Silver Shield Paladin from these ones of the magic reflect monsters. But then that, that's not it. I also went on to look at repair monsters. Adelaide Brightwing got a huge buff today because first of all, she's got repair and second of all, she's got resurrect. And so mm -hmm. think of all, you know, just like that, just like this guy here, when he goes down, he's going to pop back up with four or, or, you know, five armor because um, your summoner is going to drop one on him too. Um, and, and there's other better examples of, of that. Like um, the, what's the other one called? But the resurrect in the context of void armor is really huge. And then Boatman has repair, Armorsmith has repair, Sky of a Hireling has repair. So these are all going to be super helpful. Um, and Resurrect is super huge. Adelaide, it gets both, it gets two different benefits out of this deal. So I think she's going to be uniquely pumping, in my opinion. Um, uh, these, these cards are, um, they're for, or especially Angel is going to be from just, I guess, the wild format. So maybe everybody won't care. But to me, I have this card and and I think it just got more useful. Uh, Shield Bear is the other card I was trying to remember a moment ago. This one really benefits from the Void Armor in combination with a Resurrect. If you can, the white team has quite a few Resurrects. I want to say three Resurrects. One, two, three. Yeah, three. And I actually have all three of those. And so I literally can play these three cards behind Shield Bearer, which has Taunt, by the way, and Armor for Days, six Armor at, the, at my level, and seven because of uh, Wraith's buff, and then the Void Armor kicking in. It's going to mean that I'm that they have no chance of not attacking me for, I, I mean, I would think probably four or five turns. And... And as after Shield Bearer resurrects two each time, remember that he's going to start with one hit point, but he's going to have that Void Armor. And then your if you if you have the right healers in there, like Angel of Light has Tank Heal, or doesn't have this one have Tank Heal? No, but it has the Repair. So it's like I don't. I, that sounds so durable to me. It sounds really really powerful. Yeah, and sometimes the gaining two armors especially when you have void armor is going to be better than healing him for like three or four hp because when they're hit smacking you in the face for five damage well now they're only taking that armor so the void armor is extremely good on him yes and then onyx sentinel this has been a great card for a long time and i've i've all long advocated for how this is really in like the the poor man's lord arianthus um 
but uh, I think it got it got a promotion today because it has thorns and return fire at the highest levels. That's a great combination. Now I know I know it doesn't have a substantial amount of armor, but this combo and being used in in context with the summoner that's just going to be able to drop that on you. Uh, that's nice. And lastly, I was looking at the ones that give protect. So Tower Griffin, True Speaker, Silver Shield Sheriff, and I saw. On Twitter, I saw somebody talking about getting a truth speaker. I can't remember who it was. Bought a max copy of it. Man, they're all getting significant buffs, and I think there might there there are probably others too. Ones that are going to be white or neutral that are going to have substantial armor. Not, not talking about necessarily anything. Just like have quite a bit of armor. For instance, there's a neutral that I've hated for a long time. Where is he? He he's a neutral. I'm just gonna get rid of the whites. Mm. Was it the one we were talking about earlier? Elven defender. Oh, this guy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's just it's just so mediocre. Like the amount of damage it does, the speed it has, but it comes out of the gate with like. Quite a bit of armor, it, it bronze Dang. even. It's got a lot of hit points. Mm -hmm. And then at the highest levels, look at this. It's got 15 hit points. And it starts to actually get halfway decent because of knockout, but it's still, it's brutal. Like, I, I think this is like a 4 out of 10 card. But shield is going to be great in the context of void armor. And then this card becomes more palatable. I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying it becomes, it got a promotion today. It got an upgrade. In silver, yeah, he becomes a lot more of a defensive monster. Yeah. Because at, at five, he gets shield. Yeah, I could really see that being a very successful defensive monster in silver in particular. You're mm -hmm. right, because the level five is permissible. Yeah. Um, Enchanted Defender we talked about before we started recording. this. The only so weakness this had was, was magic before. Only. Now it's... It's all better. <laughs> Let me know what you think, the, Jim. And that, yeah, it's, I mean, the one HP, obviously. Um, oh, well, I guess, does it still die to poison in one hit? It would. Yep. Okay. So, Noxus Fumes is still pretty rough for him. But other than that, and hopefully not getting poisoned, mm -hmm. um, you know, when, because how much armor does he have at max level? Nine? Yep. Yeah, th this guy's kind of a baller. Yeah. It may where opportunity is going to attack him. And then you, again, don't even have to worry about the magic at all. Because it's just like, I actually have 10 HP, so good luck. This is the other one I was thinking about before we started recording the Goblin Mech. This is a card that's quite good. First of all, I want to look at, I'm looking at, I was looking at my cards there. I actually want to pop over here and look at. All cards. Yeah, all cards. And But the Goblin Mech, wherever he be now. It has the one main weakness of that was definitely its magic susceptibility. It had it does crazy amount of damage, five or six at the highest levels, um, and it's got five or six hit points is kind of the weak thing with like five or six armor. But now that's got void armor on it. And let's just look up the goblin. So. Look at this. Even at bronze, it's got four damage. Like there are, I don't know if there are any. There, I, maybe there's one or two monsters that do four damage at bronze. Um, and that, and that's out of the gate before uh, summoners giving them damage. Yeah, with piercing yeah. too, man. Yeah, that card's crazy good. How, yeah. how much? It's only seventy bucks to get a level eight, and at level. Wow. I saw this earlier when I was pre before we even got on chat together, Jim. And I was thinking, man, this this card right here, like forty cents of BCX. This got a, card. This card just got a big promotion, like it really did. This is going to synergize very well, especially at higher levels, um, in conjunction with that summoner, because you like the stun is huge, the piercing's huge, the damage is gigantic, and now that armor is going to be void armor. I love it. Look at this. Seven armor and nine hit points. Yeah, Holy that's cow. Beefy. <laughs> that's like gelatinous cube hit points. Mm -hmm. 
Um, let me normally, see. normally I tend to not care too too much about summoners that are a bit more defensive because you know I like to look for the more overall offensive ones. Mm -hmm. But now we, when we start talking about a lot of the good cards that are already offensive. Yep. But now their problem is they can't survive. Mm -hmm. This now gives them a home. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. This Silver Shield Knight has been a really good card for a long time. I love this card. I own this card. I use it uh -oh. all the time. He's so good now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, The because the only thing is he's, of course, he's got low hit points. This is going to really help him too. I think I, I'll find, a, I'll, I'll get more play out of this guy now, I think. Um, and then one more I saw just the, just some of the moderns like Gargoyle Lion a little bit promoted too. like it, it is a little bit low on the hit point side and yes, it has void, but now it's even better off because of the little bit of armor that he's going to be rocking. Um, and for this cost, like, I mean, I, you, I feel strongly that Gargoyle Lion could be, you know, a 50 cent card someday. Um, and you know, shout out to Luke with the with the Lion Army. I know he's got the he's got <laughs> he's got ten million of these things, but like I really I think it's I think it I think it's got a big a big upgrade today with respect to that summoner. Um mm -hmm. and disintegrator also. Again, because got those, right? We should speculate about price, because I actually have some thoughts on this, but I don't have a firm opinion. And I'd love to go back and forth with you, Jim. Yeah, I mean, I re I feel strongly about this summoner. I think it's I think he's exceptional. I think Wraith is a must-have, and I think well, I'm gonna buy him for sure. I guess the question is, what is the cost? What's a fair price to pay? Because you know, as we look at summoners that exist out there um, in the legendary realm, like they are super expensive. Uh, what is I was gonna say, do you even need to buy any more? These are, this is the, uh, for me from the legendary summoners, the only one I have is, is dragon. I guess I will get them through the airdrops. Mm -hmm. I suspect now, I don't know how many I'm going to get. Actually, I probably can calculate that. Can't I? Like there's airdrop calculators for. Yep. Hmm. I don't know where that would be. You know, a website for that. Um, well, I just know how many we're going to get for the final one because it's going to be 675. Mm. So if we go into Splinterlands real quick okay. to the airdrop page. Up. Yeah. And then hit the airdrops. Yep. So number 14 is going to be 675. 13 is going to be 650. 12 is going to be 625. 11, 600. 10 is 575 and then 9 is 550. Okay. So then you take all of your packs that you have divide by 550. So I got I have 9600 mm -hmm. 9632 divided by 550. So I should get 17 copies um from this account, but I have more purchases on other accounts. Dude, this is so mm. crazy. This is yep. this is bananas to to me, by the way. Like I think each one of those cards to me is worth, you know, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say each one of them is worth a hundred dollars, but I not I'm not saying that's what the price is when it launches. That's just what it's worth to me. So I wouldn't dream of selling them for less than that, but I suspect they come out much cheaper than that. I suspect they come out in the neighborhood of my first reaction, my gut reaction is like Forty dollars ish, maybe fifty, maybe thirty in that neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. But but let's look at some of the others, because yeah, you know you can't really compare it to Chansey. You yeah. can't really compare it. Like you can and you can't. They're totally different. But if you want to talk about a white team summoner that's legendary, that's give, giving you sub substantial bonuses, and you really have to look at the small sample size of this of these guys, and so. Yeah, they're different, and and maybe uh, Wraith is worse. I actually don't know if Wraith. I think Wraith's probably better than Peak Rider, but then Peak Rider I, gives you more uh, power. What's that? I said I would say Wraith is better than Peak Rider because Peak Rider can't compete with Magic. 
he lowers range attacks and he gives armor yeah what about chanceus who chanceus or wraith um ooh, i i think i still have to give it to wraith just because his overall defensiveness that he gives you know depending on how much armor they have it you're essentially like doubling their hp pool mm -hmm. yeah but like the armor repair again doesn't matter if they're not breaking the armor the resurrection is really good mm -hmm. um but it gets even better when you have void armor because now you're getting all of those those that armor back yeah because and now that's even giving you more than one hp yep right. and then the triage man triage is really good yeah but if we're talking about if you got a tank with taunt that triage isn't really doing anything unless they have blast or scatter shot i guess mm -hmm. so i am i feel it's uh wraith is a ton better than peak rider like a ton but for sure I think Chanceus is kind of in the ballpark. It's hard for me to say. Like I, I There's different things at this point with yeah, those guys. Yeah, I see a unique argument for each of their utility, and the only reason it's worth kind of exploring this conversation is to try and begin to say who are the comparables, so that we can then explore what price makes sense. I mean, clearly, I'm going to say it's something like this. Like in terms of if you were to give um, Wraith a score. I, you know, I'm going to give it probably, a, I'm going to give it an A, maybe not an A plus. I'm going to give it an A and I, I probably give Chanceus like, I don't own the, I never bought this one and I don't think it's up there. Like as far as when you compare this to the Yoden or you compare this to Kitty, I still think Kitty or Yoden are better. So, I mean, this is probably a B plus or like a B double plus to me. So in some sense, I, I do think this is, I, I, that kind of means that I think Chance, uh, Wraith is better, but understand also that. Um, I'm comparing in this context, I'm comparing, I'm looking at Chanceus and saying compared to other untamed summoners. And when I look at Wraith, I'm like, I'm comparing it to, I'm comparing it only to this. If I was to compare Wraith to Kitty or to Yoden, it wouldn't get an A because in my mind, Kitty and Yoden are like A and A plus and, and everything else is so far anyways, is everything else is like somewhere lower than that. Um, but my my point is it's something like this quality wise something like this and you're talking a hundred dollars per bcx and this is one tenth as common right because there's 1.5 million copies of uh of untamed and there was 15 million packs of chaos legion so that alone should 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 imply like a 11 dollar price for wraith but i don't think that's reasonable i because 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 we have it's not just 10 to one and that's the only consideration. It's actually our audience has grown. Our, our, our player base has grown. The number of accounts that are out there that are gonna want a copy have grown. Even if they are bots, they're gonna, you know, in many cases, lots of accounts. I think way, a, a ton of accounts are gonna want a copy. And so I argue 20 to $50 and I kind of think 30 to 40 is like really where I'm thinking. What do you think? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I was thinking like roughly around the same point. Mm. Um, you know, it's it is floating around the quicks the devious price point. Um, but the thing I also wanted to bring up with the chanciest argument. Yeah. Yep. So we think about how many games, right? Have you had that ended by turn four? Um, I, I would. I, I would say a lot yeah probably it feels like probably most is maybe the, yeah. yeah so chanceus is extremely good the longer you are able to stall out the game yes the new guy is better for those short burst games because rather than him repairing two armor every single turn well now your tank just gets essentially that extra hp back mm -hmm. right from the start Yep. So if they have if they have the five armor, well now if it's magic, it's just they have five extra health. Mm -hmm. And then I, anything else you throw in the team, you know, obviously just adds to it. But I think the wraith in terms of burst games, like four turn four and faster, mm -hmm. I think I have to give it to Wraith. Yeah, 
I think I agree with you actually. That's a great way of actually breaking it down too. I think you're right about chances is more of like the slow play. I'm going to outlast you. I'm going to resurrect and repair and, and you probably yep. bring some thorns to the table and the sort of thing that's going to just chip you down while, uh, while, and just outlast you. Whereas, oh. whereas Wraith is really bringing that amplify is either going to really work or it's not like if, if I read you right and I, and I throw a magic reflect with my amplify through the race and you tried magic. I mean, I think you're done if I play that right. Um, if I go, if I, if I predict magic reflect is necessary and then you, you, you go melee, then in some sense you can sidestep what, what I'm trying with my wraith. Um, yeah. and that doesn't mean wraith is now suddenly terrible because still the armor and the void armor is great, but it, it just begins to, um, it's like, if I read you right, wraith is going to do your right win and win, win and win quickly, I think. And if yeah. I read you wrong, Wraith might lose more battles in, in the, like, like you said, kind of four five, six, if it, the battles are going long, it's probably not a good sign for a, a Wraith. I would think. Mm -mm. Um, although like, although like we were talking about the void armor, along with having a repair, mm -hmm. if say they do a llama cron on you and you have the repair, they literally can't kill your frontliner. Yep. 